guys, I'm Tori Sterling. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video that I am really excited about because I wanted to do it kind of on my podcast, but then I thought that this platform would really enjoy it maybe a little bit more. Um, and that's how to build an online brand. Building an online brand in today's day and age is something that is so valuable and can bring you so much farther than it could even five years ago. Like it's a constantly changing business. And I think it's a really cool idea to get like an insider's perspective from it. This video is sponsored by Joby, which I'll get into in a little bit, but thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Without any further ado, let's begin. So the first thing is what is a brand? A brand is something that represents and describes you based on your post and your actions. For example, Jay Alvarez, when you think of Jay Alvarez, I always think of beachy, carefree, adventurous, and like the color blue because he's always with beachy posts and posting like the ocean and stuff. So I associate him with the beach and the color blue. Now, if you look at someone that has like I don't want to like drag anyone, but like a scandalous brand, like Tana Mojo, for example, has a very scandalous brand, like X-rated, 21, stuff like that, like a very different brand than Jay Alvarez, but her actions meet up with her brand and his actions meet up with his brand. For me, I'd say my brand is like a fitness um, and lifestyle brand and spin. I'd even associate spin with my brand because that's pretty much all that I talk about. So what you talk about and what you do and what your posts are, that's gonna establish your brand. So beyond once you figure out what your brand is, and at the very beginning, you might not know and that's okay, but to develop a brand, I always recommend these steps. First off, you'll need a message, you'll need equipment, you'll need a platform, you'll need a look and an aesthetic, and you'll need an end goal. So before you even begin your online brand and after you have those five measurable things, um, you need to establish what is it that's gonna make you feel like your brand is successful. And this is different for every single person and it's gonna be different for why you're even starting a brand in the first place. So could it be that success means you're getting sponsorships? Could it mean that you get to quit your full-time job and make this your full-time job? Does it mean that you get to go help out and start a nonprofit? Like what is it that once you you hit something you're gonna be like okay now my online brand is successful and I can continue to do it or to do other things and branch out from it so plan a measurable step of what's gonna make your online brand successful you're gonna need a message and this is something that I preach all the time to people in my life and to people online and it's what is your platform gonna offer in the long run I mean in this day and age there are so many social media influencers youtubers bloggers like what is it that's gonna make your content different and unique from everybody else out there. I don't know, let's say you wanna be a makeup artist and you wanna be Kylie Jenner's makeup artist and that's your goal. What is your message gonna be on Instagram? If Are you gonna be using your Instagram as a portfolio to kinda of gain credibility through followers to get Kylie Jenner's attention? Or maybe you're a fitness trainer and you really just wanna get more clients so you're gonna post like your physique on your Instagram or you're gonna post snippets of workouts on your Instagram and see what your clients are gonna get themselves into. Maybe you're just like the average woman that really just believes in girl power and empowering other women. Are you gonna come on Instagram and just preach about empowering other women or are you gonna talk about how we should be supporting one another rather than tearing us down? Like, what is your message that you're trying to get across to the people? What are you doing on Instagram or YouTube or a blog site that's going to be different than the next person that's a fitness model and you're trying to be a fitness model? Like, what's the difference? Once you have your message then you're gonna to need to get the equipment and today it's been really easy to get good equipment at a pretty affordable price and especially with starting an online brand like Instagram or YouTube it's fairly cheap to start because all you need is a camera and I'm filming right now on the Canon G7X I really really recommend this camera I think it's the best in the industry and um, it's really small, it's a point and shoot and it films in super HD as you guys can tell. It has great audio and it's really, really good just for beginners. I don't really know anything about cameras themselves, but I do know that this is a really good camera and I don't really have to mess with any of the settings on it. You can honestly just open it out of the box and record and that's really awesome. Another really good tool is your phone and iPhones have really stepped up the game as we all know. So the cameras are super, super HD on these. I mean, a ton of YouTubers have started out on their cameras like or on their iPhones like Emma Chamberlain literally started on her iPhone and then she got a camera like months into her YouTube when she had like a million subscribers so if you can afford a camera then I definitely recommend a tripod and the tripod that I recommend is the Joby Gorillapod 3k Pro I love this it's actually what I'm using right now to film myself on my camera 
and when they reached out to work with me they're like hey do you want to like talk about this and i was like yes because i already use it so it's a perfect fit but this is the gorilla pod 3k pro by joby and i really love it because you can untwist this and move the camera around these legs which is my favorite part they bend every which way like that so you can prop it up like in a car i've put it on trees before to get shots um for me i put it on spin bikes somewhere anywhere in the studio so like you can grip this onto anything and it will get you the perfect shot every single time it's super easy to hold it's really really lightweight you just put your camera up on here onto this little screw and then you just hold it out like this and you film and it's not like so big where it looks like you know you're holding like this huge tripod it's kind of discreet in the way that it's not huge and your camera just sits right on it and it kind of just looks like an extension of your arm and it's really really comfortable it gets a really good shot and yeah i just really love this tripod and i definitely recommend it to all the joby gorilla pod 3k pro i really love it and i definitely recommend it for equipment another thing that i'd recommend for equipment is a laptop and i really think that macbooks are the best for YouTube and online stuff just because you can use iMovie. I feel like everything is made for Apple these days, so I'd recommend a MacBook as opposed to a PC. That's just my personal opinion, but the editing softwares on MacBooks are so much better, um, unless you're using like Adobe, which then you can use on a PC as well, but I just recommend MacBooks. Also, some people like lights. I would always use a ring light and box lights, but now I'm just sort of on the whole natural light wave. Lighting is up to you, but I know you can get kits on Amazon for like less than $100. So lighting isn't too expensive, but it is something that you should think about, especially if you work like a nine to five and you're gonna film when you come home and it's gonna be dark out. That's probably when you'll wanna invest in light so that you have good lighting for your video. Next, you're gonna to wanna to choose a platform and you're gonna to wanna to choose a platform that is easy for you to maintain and keep up with and one that you can really master. So I'd say the three that a lot of people do are YouTube, Instagram, and blogging. Now, you can totally do all three and I think that's great, but I just wanna make sure that in the beginning, if you're doing all three, that you're a master at all three. So really study the algorithms, study how people that follow you are gonna see your post because it sucks to put in all this hard work and no one see your post because the algorithm just sort of like screws you over you don't want that okay your look and aesthetic i think is so important branding can even go all the way down to like a specific color for you so if you're an instagrammer let's say um a lot of people do themes and themes i feel like are so like 2015 2016 but a lot of like the big instagrammers and um bloggers still do have themes on their instagram just because it flows together nicely and people like when things look aesthetically pleasing and like when things flow together like the human eye just likes that so it's in our nature to enjoy a good aesthetic and i don't think there's anything wrong with it but I do want to make sure that you're choosing a theme or an aesthetic that fits your brand and that's going to be easy to maintain. So for example, I'm going to go back to Tana Mojo. If Tana Mojo, who's kind of like scandalous and like when I think of her brand, I think of the colors black and red. I don't know why, it's just what I think of. Maybe because it's MTV, but that's just what I think of. Um, so if Tana Mojo was out here on Instagram doing like an all white theme, that was like bright and bubbly like that wouldn't match her brand do you know what like does that click in your head like do you know what i'm saying by that and like for me because a lot of my photos are taken in a dark room because i'm in the spin room a lot of the time doing a bright theme for me just doesn't work i tried it and it was so hard to maintain i literally couldn't do it now i'm back to like the darks and the grays and the purples and the blacks because that's just the life of me and like that's how i get my pictures to flow together is because it's based on my natural lifestyle. You have to think of what's going to work with you organically and what's going to look good with the eye. So I'd recommend to get presets. I just think it's a really easy way to make sure that your brand looks good with what you're saying and that your image matches up with your actions. So once you have people, the big thing is you have to keep the people listening. And I remember in A Star Is Born, Jack was saying this to Allie and he was pretty much like, once you have the people listening, you have to like keep them listening and do things because they're listening now and they aren't going to be listening forever and that's so true it with social media once you're out of sight you're out of mind once people are listening to you or following you or liking your stuff or engaging with your stuff you have to keep them listening so you have to engage back by replying to comments replying to dms using all of instagram's features like stories posts igtv you have to use the entire platform same with youtube you have to consistently post and you have to reply to comments encourage people to engage on your video and then you engage with them back you have to get people listening and 
you should post about every single day if you can and you should post at relatively the same time youtube likes the algorithm when people are posting at the same time every single day for that one specific account so tend to do that like, this is a really good time to kind of spread your end goal and to spread your message like people are listening now and followers are very devoted to who they follow on instagram or ig live like honestly look at this whole food combining trend like as soon as food combining came out all of these followers of kenzie burke and maggie mcdonald were like food combining is life it's a way to go and now people are realizing like oh maybe it isn't so that's sort of what i mean like followers in a way can be like zombies how they just do whatever the influencer tells them to do so once you have people listening to you use it for a really good reason. What is your end goal? And I cannot stress this enough, once you reach success, and that's measured to whatever you said in the very beginning, once you reach success, I cannot stress enough that I want you to build off of your brand beyond the platform because blogging, YouTubing, and Instagram, it's all the internet that can literally be deleted right now. Like Instagram is an app that can be deleted right this very second. And if your entire career is based off of Instagram, what are you going to do if it gets deleted? Like that's why all of those people freak out whenever Instagram is down for like nine hours because they're like, oh my God, that's my entire career. And they're like, they realize that like it could be taken away from them at any moment. Then again, so can any job, but that's why I encourage you to have multiple little you know, side gigs so that you can have something in your backup plan in case Instagram does go down or in case YouTube gets deleted or in case your website gets hacked. Like what are you going to do if your platform just disappears on you? I want you to expand beyond your platform because once you've created a successful measurement of yourself, you can scale yourself up to something else. Like that's why I think starting stride was so special to me and important to me because where I got on my YouTube allowed me to have like the momentum and the credibility to open a studio and to open a business outside of an online business. And the last and final thing is to stay authentic and to stay you because if someone wanted to go follow Whitney Simmons and you're coming on here wanting to be like Whitney Simmons, they'll just go follow the real Whitney Simmons and not like the fake one that just is like her carbon copy monkey that wants to do everything that she does because she wants the followers just like Whitney. You have to be original and you have to be different and I promise you your people will follow your people will come if you are yourself because you're gonna attract people that like your vibe and that like your attitude and that like your posts so be authentic and always be you from the beginning it'll just help you so much in the long run so I hope you guys all enjoyed this video I hope you found these steps somewhat helpful and I hope this inspired you to build an online brand I think it's a really amazing tool this day and age and something to really take advantage of so if you guys have any questions let me know in the comments down below if you liked this sort of video I have a podcast and it's called manifest with Tori Sterling and we talk about topics like this every single Monday at 8 a.m. So I'll have that link down below. You can stream it on Spotify and on Apple iTunes. But if not, um, then yeah, this is just a one-time video and you probably will get another fitness vlog from me next. So thank you, Joby, for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. I'll have a link to every single product that I talked about down below if you guys want to check it out. And I'll see all of you guys in my next video. Bye.